one issue that has become a bigger concern with uh, both violin makers and musicians is uh, taking instruments and raw materials uh, over borders, either shipping or carrying them personally. Uh, for makers, many of the materials that we use have become uh, tightly controlled because of environmental concerns, um, ebony, ivory, tortoiseshell, uh, and increasingly even materials that we considered were quite commonplace are coming under tighter controls. Uh, so I think makers need to become very aware of this issue because uh, when you buy wood uh, overseas and try to import it, people have had instances where their where their shipments have been uh, held up in customs and destroyed because they didn't have proper um, either uh, clearance because of environmental concerns or fumigation uh, or various kinds of import duties and licenses. Uh, it's something which is a big risk to any professional maker. Um, and it's quite unclear. It's still a field which it's very difficult to get good guidance on, even when you talk to the government. Um, no one has really written the guidelines very clearly. So it's an area with a lot of pitfalls and a lot of confusion. And uh, I don't even think we are not going to be able to completely give a definitive answer either, but I think we could start to at least explore what is known now and what are the precautions uh, makers could take in importing materials. I think an, another very important issue is for musicians who travel with uh, their violins overseas and go through customs. There have been some very well publicized cases where musicians had uh, Stradivari violins seized at airports because they didn't have quite the proper documentation at the airport that they had that they owned the instrument and that they had imported it uh, without paying duties. And it's not even an obvious what they should have had. So it's very difficult to avoid these problems. So it's something I think we need more clarity on. And it is a concern for every musician who travels. Um, and increasingly, it's a problem because it, before it was quite casual with a musician to take their case and walk across through the, through the, through the, um, through the green line. But uh, now it's a bit unpredictable. So increasingly, I think people need to take steps to document their instruments and uh, uh, and the problem is that there's different protocols in different countries. There's not a unified standard. So I think um, together in New York that we could try to explore what we know about it currently, uh, but also um, just lay out some of the, the things that people need to educate themselves about and to be aware that standards differ, differ from country to country um, and to protect themselves because it, it does happen that uh, you know, in these couple of very well publicized cases, um, it took them you know weeks to get their instruments back, and uh, especially with loaned instruments from foundations, uh, instruments that are bought in different countries. There's many different and quite complicated and very important issues. So I think it's something that every musician who ex expects to have a professional career needs to begin to be aware of. So uh, in New York, we'll try to to expose what there is, to answer questions. Uh, and also just show how much, uh, how it's all not very clear.